Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Service Watercolor. At any time during this video, you can click on the link in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more of my videos or learn more about my online courses, you can click on the link at the end of the video. This is a narrated step by step tutorial of a vignette farm scene. Hey everybody, this is Rick Sorotz. I am in my studio and I'm about to begin a painting for my YouTube channel. This particular painting is going to be uh, a farm building and there's a couple of buildings here, a, a larger one and a smaller one with a, with a simple setting of some trees and a field and a fence. And I'm going to modify this uh, a little bit here for my painting and one of the things I, I feel is you strongly on is that you should, should, should not just try and copy photographs. You need to interpret your subject and uh, design it into a painting. That's your interpretation. Now that might be a close resemblance of, of what's there, but there's times when you need to add things, subtract things, or make adjustments. And in this particular case, I'm going to make some changes. If you look at the smaller building on the right, it goes behind the, the larger building as one continuous shape. Uh, I thought it would be more interesting to have a space in there, so I'm going to move that little building out a little bit so I'll be able to see uh, a little bit of the trees in between there. And uh, I'm not going to put the fence in. Uh, I'm going to actually treat this more as a vignette. And uh, so that vignette isn't something that just happens haphazardly. I need to think about that a little bit because uh, it's hard to see this drawing, but I have the building, some trees, the tree line, and I'm designing the shapes here that are going to make this vignette where the white of the paper is going to remain and, and, and where uh, I'm going to be putting down some values. And this, this, all those shapes are, are just as important. One is as important as the other. The, the, the area I'm going to paint is just as important as the, the shapes that I'm leaving where I'm not going to paint. So to help me think that through, I've done a little study where I have the, the pattern of light, some dark values, kind of show where I'm going to be connecting with the edges of this paper. So I thought about that in advance of doing my painting and it, the sketch itself isn't as important as the thinking process that I go through to create it. So I'm not waiting until I start my painting to try and figure out what I'm going to do. I've thought it through, I've, I've made some changes in, in the composition and I'm going to be focusing <clears throat> excuse me, on these uh, large trees here. Some these dark tree trunks and branches reaching out with some foliage and these greens are going to be behind here then I have some shadows uh, areas here on the on this white building and this big stretch of field so I'm going to just uh, work with some of the larger areas of value first and start to define that path of light and start to actually start to cra uh, craft that, that vignette shape that I'm going to use so we'll go ahead and get started and I'm going to use a different view here, a different layout without me in it so you can get a better view of the reference material and the palette. So this is what I'll be uh, using for most of the video here. So I'm going to begin by painting uh, some of the values on uh, the the building itself on the structure so it's going to be a kind of a, a continuous area of a wash that I'll be putting down and uh, I'm probably going to use a half inch flat brush I think for that so I'm going to just set up my palette here I'm going to use a variety of colors there's a little ultramarine blue I could use some Payne's gray, but I tend, tend to just use that for my studies. Um, but it, it could uh, it creates an interesting uh, kind of a, a shadowy color that I could use with some other things. But I'm going to mix what I'm going to be using here. So I have some ultramarine blue. It's going to be you know somewhat of a middle value. Take a little rose matter put some of that in my my ultramarine blue and uh, create some some violets but I still want to have some that are have a little more blue to them and then I'm going to take some uh, 
raw sienna. Give me a little warm tone. I'm gonna mix a little of the, the rose matter with it. So really what I have here is a blue with my ultramarine, a red with my rose matter, and a bit of a yellow there with my raw sienna. Um, and I'm gonna use just combinations of those. And I, I can gray things down a little bit here by adding a little bit of yellow. A little yellow here. And it's about a middle value. So now I'm going to uh, just start to put in the, the, this middle value. And I'm going to, as I do this, I'm going to think a little bit about uh, temperature as I put this down. I'm going to have a, a combination of some some warm and some cool uh, colors. So I'm going to go ahead and start to put some of this in. Add a little uh, reflective light, some, some warmer tones. I think we'll get a little bluer. Up a little of that red. I think I got my brush into something that I wasn't planning on, but we'll move on from there. Now this is going to continue on where it's picking up some shadows. And here, I want this to, to pick up some of that, that uh, uh, grassy, the tops of the, the grass. So while that's still wet, I'm going to scrape some of that down. So that's going to give me a softer edge. up a little too. Now I need to continue on here. I don't want an edge to set on this. So this is just a half inch flat brush. bit off track with my watch and you clean that up a little I just want to go under here bring that down and really this is where I really want my darker value more of a regular edge there, softness, the softness of the grass that I'm picking up. Get some of this warmer color here. And, uh, Where I made that, uh, I put that wash in there where I really didn't want it. And I want that to be a, a, a bright white. So I might actually 
mask that off a little bit here at some point and lift that out just to get that to be a stronger uh, white in there. So you can see I'm, I'm, I'm mapping really the path of light here as it's hitting things. And I'm going to take this over here and I'm going to put that middle value on this, this structure. in a shadow. Get the window, the edge of that window in there. And I'm going to get the shadow side of the chimney. Probably going to leave that alone at the moment. So there we have just a uh, initial middle value wash, and I'm going to dry this, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to uh, pick this uh, lighter shape uh, up a little bit more and clean that up where I'd like that to be a nice bright white. So let me go ahead and dry this. All right, I've dragged my painting, and now I'm going to clean this shape up here where I, I put some of a, a, a wash that I really didn't want to put down. So I'm just put a little tape. This is a is a drafting tape, and I'm going to mask that area there. Just so happens that I put a wash over the area really where I want it to be one of my uh, whitest whites. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And we'll go from about here. So now this area right in here I'm going to take a uh, magic eraser. Magic, it's a magic eraser from uh, Mr. Clean, one of those cleaning sponges. But you could use a, a regular sponge for this. And I have a tissue here to blot out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrub that lightly. that tape up. The thing with masking tape is sometimes it pulls up the paint or the paper. So you can see now that I have that back pretty much to the white of the paper and I'll be able to maintain that nice bright white there. And I really it's not too damp so I'm not worried about drying it at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in behind here and, and describe these trees back here and um, I'm going to keep that uh, pretty soft edged initially and uh, kind of a, a, a dark middle value so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off my palette get this off And I'm going to mix uh, a green here using sap green. I'm going to have a nice pool of color. I'm 
I'm going to put some uh, quinacrid and gold out here. And I'll take a little uh, pyro red and mix that in with some of this green. And I probably want a little more. And I want a little darker mixture. So for my darker mixture, I'm going to use the sap green, royal blue. And I'm going to go back to the pyro red. Get a little darker. Still a little darker here. Just mix this until I get uh, what I'm after. So that's pretty good. So now I have my palette set up for what I'm going to paint, the colors I'm going to be working with. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a one inch flat brush with water. And I'm about a, my board's at about a 20 degree angle. And uh, I'm just putting down some clear water. So I have two water containers. One is for dirty water and one is for clear water. So I can have my clear water when I want to put a wash down. So this paper's pretty saturated. And I'm just cutting around the shapes that are here and bringing it down to the edge of uh, the ground where the starts to meet a ground cover. And I need to turn my head so I can see. The best way to tell. The moisture content is to see how it's reflecting light. If it's glossy, it's pretty saturated. And once it starts to dry and get damp, it starts to get more of a satin sheen. And then it starts to get more of a matte finish as it dries out. So, all right, I've got this pretty well covered, I think. So I'm going to be working with... Uh, an area here um, a, uh, a wash brush so I have a round wash brush and I'm just going to start to, to drop in some color here to show the shapes of these these trees that are more uh, kind of background I have a few trees that are going to be more a little more pronounced as I as I paint this Keep some gold in this. So this, this should go in the areas where the paper's wet. And uh, leave me a clean edge unless I've gone over the edge with my brush when I was applying the water. That should give me a pretty good edge. And I need to work fast enough that I don't don't let this uh, paper dry out so that I can still maintain these nice soft edges and not get uh, backwash. Drop a little darker tone in here and you'll see these pools of, of uh, paint starting to uh, build up here and there where I leave the bead and I just keep moving that bead down I can't let it set too long because if I do the drier paper above it is going to continue to dry and then it's going to get thirsty and start pulling that moisture up so I'll have to it's something that has to be managed and I have to go and pick up some of those the beads where it's excessive. So kind of a big shape. And here I'm going to bring this down. 
a little lighter over here. And let's see, I think I'm, I'm good with that. I'll bring a little more of this darker green over here, just a, a little. But I need to start picking up. Missed the spot there, perhaps. Um, I need to start picking up the uh, excess some of this beads so I don't I don't get any backwash. Now where this uh, paper is coming down, um, I'm going to uh, scrape a little bit where the, the, the color's coming down. I'm going to create kind of a grassy edge back here a little bit too. <laughs> Uh, right here in between just, just a little bit this is a little farther away than here so it's not going to be quite as pronounced but I'm going to show a little bit of it so I break that edge up and I still have some that are kind of horizontal right. and now what I want to do is I want to dry this and uh, then I'm going to come in and, and start to paint this large shape of kind of ground cover here. So let me let me pause a minute here and we'll dry this. Okay, this is thoroughly dry. And now I'm going to be working with a wash that's going to cover this area here. It's going to reach the edge of the paper. And I'm going to start fairly light. Uh, some of this mixture that I have here so I can have some of these these grassy edges show through. And I actually want to get a little bit more gold in this. be uh, somewhat loose with the application of here. I want this edge to be uh, interesting. Got a little of this green coming in here. I kind of mapped out the way I wanted to go with it, but you know, uh, some of it is just going to develop as I, as I paint this. I ha I'm staying with a general shape, but I'm not out, I'm not following an outline. I'm making just kind of expressive brush strokes to carry to the edge. I want these kind of be interesting edges here. I don't want to try and outline something and paint it. Get some more of the quinacridone gold going. Gonna pick up some of that. I'm probably just gonna carry that color off the page here. I draw this so I was going to take these shapes to the edge, but I kind of like the, the the broken edge shape that I got there. Just some interest here with the uh, with the edge of that. Just just to make it a little more a little more active than just painting a flat wash. And I want to dry that quickly because 
Uh, I'm starting to get some backwash because I went into some damp paper here with a loaded brush, which is okay right now. It's not that big a deal. I'm actually going to scrape a little bit in here to add uh, a little bit of what I have going on. All right, now one more time I'm going to dry this. All right, so this is dry. Now I'm going to take uh, the same colors I've been working with, the sap green, and uh, some royal blue. Get a darker value here. And uh, I want some of the pyro red. some stronger gold so now these are these are darker uh, colors that I have a little more uh, pigment in the mixtures and uh, now I'm gonna take this brush I'm gonna make some some brush strokes here that uh, I have I have a the tree trunks and some branches but first I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the suggestion of these uh, of some of the greenery that's on this and I'm starting to get uh, you know I'm very uh, a much darker value I want to take some of the moisture off this and I'll come in and I'll work with uh, the, the trunks a little bit after I put some of this in because Sometimes there's a tendency to paint those trunks and then you just hang foliage off of them and, and you don't integrate it uh, as much as you probably should and it looks like foliage hanging off the side of a of a stick. So sometimes I'll just put in my my foliage and then I'll come back and put that trunk in and it's not going to you're not going to see the trunk from top to bottom because some of that gets covered up with foliage. So here we got this stretching out. So just using some broken edges to help describe this. And um, Need to though come in and take a little smaller brush here because I want to maintain some clean edges. I'm going to paint this darker value in. So I have these dark, darker trees behind uh, the structure. And I'm going to carry that dark shape here off the page and connect with the edge. edges up a little bit. So I want a little bit more and I'm going to 
bring some of this darker value down here on this side. And break it up a little. bring this darker value in between the two, two buildings here and there's some nice light values here and white of the paper that's going to contrast well against this as it does here. I'm going to come back here with some darker uh, touches. Let me get my bigger brush. Gonna connect, I think. Let's see, I'm gonna connect here, have a break in that. And I think I'm gonna bring in some darker value a little lower here to connect. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the edge of the, the building. Create a bit of a horizontal in between. All right, now I'm going to take some of the royal blue, maybe a little burnt sienna with some red, whatever I had there, and I'm going to in uh, the tree trunks. I actually want to get a little darker mixture. So some burnt sienna. And now I'm going to start to put in indication of these tree trunks in, in a real dark value. And I want to put these branches on at the same time so that the uh, they, they kind of merge, they connect without an obvious separation that looks like they were stuck on. I want them just to be part of the same wash. Put just an indication somewhere here of another tree. I think I'll do that here. Just a little bit to complement that. And I'm going to take my brush and I think I'll dry this first, but I'm going to come back with some, some darker greens on a few of these branches.
All right, so this is thoroughly dried. Before I start to put any darker values back here in some of the greenery, I'm going to start to put in some of the darks that I have here so they can, can, can see really where things are evolving to where I'm at and, and create a balance with those darks. So I've cleaned my palette and I'm going to take some royal blue and I'm going to take some rose matter and some raw sienna Make some different colors here. I'm going to put a little raw sienna in my blue. Kind of grays this down. This combination I have it almost, almost gives me a, a Payne's gray tone. So right now I'm going to start to build some values here to describe a few of these uh, features on this structure and I kind of have um, some small dark shapes against all this the, the, the lighter tones So when I paint windows, I don't just paint a bunch of little squares. I try and make it a little bit more interesting. Not that some of them don't end up as squares or rectangles. We have this series of uh, small windows. Sometimes people ask me why I put the paint down. Sometimes. And then come back with a tissue and, and blot it. And uh, normally when I do that, there's two reasons. Either I'm just trying to create a little more interest in the wash I put down, the texture create a little texture and an unevenness in the wash. I don't want a, all these windows just to be a, a bunch of little dark squares. So I'll lift a little off in some areas. I might touch it with my finger just to create a little more interesting shape. So that's one reason I do it. The other reason is I put down a mark that I don't like and I just blot it to either lift it or just alter it a little bit. Maybe it's a little too heavy and I'll blot it just to lighten it up some. Um, but those are the two main reasons that when I blot, I come in and blot it, I do that. I mean, a lot of the painting process is about adjustments. So just simple brush, just a few simple brush strokes there to describe those windows. Now here we have two, if I look at my, my reference, they're two just pretty dark squares. And I'm going to put them in almost as such because they're, they help. I'll bring us in up to this area and uh, I won't mind them in, mind them being full in that because they're just kind of dark and, and draw you in. So I started to lay a few darks in there and I think 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, take this mixture here, it is kind of a reddish gray, and I'm going to get the this the rooftop in the side that's kind of facing away from the light source. So this has a, a little rose matter, a little raw sienna, a little, a little blue probably in it. Catch some of this blue tone that I have. Bring some of that in. And these I'm going to leave pretty much the white of the paper, just picking up that feeling of uh, the pattern of the light. And um, I kind of, there's some doors there, they're hard to see. I'm going to just give the indication that there's some doors here, and I'm not going to define them too much beyond the, suggesting that there's some, you know cracks around the, the door frame that you can make out. I don't really need to render them. The eye will finish some of these lines that are broken up. I'll just try and break up the lines to keep them interesting. Now, on this one, As I decided, I was going to put a, uh, I was going to paint this door in as it, or leave it as it's like an open door with a dark shape in it. But I, I think that's just going to pull all the attention into that little, little door. So I'm just going to describe it by painting around it. Uh, use some line to, to describe some of the edges and some of the the areas where we have darker value. Now I have this uh, pole here. I'm going to paint this a bit of a. Uh, I'm going I'm to make it a little darker towards the bottom. As we're against that light. And. Uh, Then I'm going to let it get a little, little lighter so it can contrast against uh, the, the dark trees in the background. So it's kind of gradated from a, a darker to a light tone as I've gone up. I think I'll gray over that. Maybe a little, a little more meat here at the bottom. It's, too thin compared to the top. So we put that pole in there. And now I'm going to do a little bit more of the calligraphy, what I call calligraphy, where I make these brush marks to describe edges and whatnot. Make this a little more shadowed.
there's a little bit of a shadow cast here. It's being cast by the chimney. Well, I want to I want to pick up uh, some darks here somewhere because it, it it just feels like it's it's floating a little bit, not quite anchored. And there's a little bit of the the foundation here that's a kind of a diagonal. I'm going to pick up and I'm going to pull it across this way. So just a just a hint of that building. I just want a few touches of value here. Just to, to feel like you can kind of see under a few boards. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, take a little bit more of my my green, I'm just going to mix into what I have here because it'll just fall right into the fold of what I'm doing. So I've got this green, a little more royal blue. I'm going to grab some of this. This might work here. And uh, now I'm going to put a little bit more uh, or a little darker green top of some of this and I still want it to be fairly broken edged. Don't quite have enough color here. So that rose rose matter is going to gray that down a little bit more than my pyro. Red will. Be a little more careful of that. It's probably enough there. I'm going to create some pockets of, of darker value over here. I think I'm going to get a little more precise of a brush. value here. Still not quite where I want it, I don't think. Pick up a little more of this. Just want to get a little darker to help balance that, that value. Get a little darker in a few of these windows.
a little, little some calligraphy, some lines here to help describe these edges a bit more. Not too dark, but a little bit. darker value here. And I'm just going to indicate a little bit more underneath the, the edge of the roof. A little bit here. Help describe some of this intersection of the two walls. Just a little darker right here. take my liner brush. It's the number one liner brush. And I'm just going to throw a few, a few branches out here, just light. some over this way. And now I'm going to go ahead and dry this again. All right. I've left this, uh, I've thoroughly dried this. And now as I look at this, I think I want to make this, this shadow side here just a, a little darker value. It's I could go with what I have there, but I, th I think I'm going to go a little darker. So I've cleaned my palette off. I'm going to go back with some of the ultramarine blue. It's kind of violet. I'm mixing a violet here with rose matter and ultramarine. And then I'm going to come in with some of the raw sienna. Let's see. Even might add a little royal blue. I kind of like the colors I get with that. And then bring in some raw sienna. And I'm going to go a little darker with this. So I'm just going to glaze over what I have there. keep wanting to paint that edge that, that area and I'm not going to bring it all the way down I'm going to just try and keep that somewhat interesting I am going to pick up a 
with this area also. Make it a little darker. Perhaps a little bit of a glaze underneath this. dry this again all right that's uh, completely dry and I'm going to come back with my liner brush now that I've glazed over this and just uh, reinforce a few of the marks I had made to show the frame of the door bit more edge and let's see probably Probably about as far as I'm going to go with this. So I'm going to go ahead and put a mat, a mat on it. And I think I'll go with that. So I started out looking at this uh, the subject and trying to decide which way I was going to go with it. And I decided I was going to go with a vignette. And I did this study. So hopefully you can see how this kind of translated into what I have here. Uh, and, and it's that thinking process, doing that in advance of going to the painting and thinking about where my values are going to be, what these shapes are going to be in general, and uh, what, what's, you know, what's the, the steps I'm going to take to develop this, where am I going to start. So uh, that's my interpretation of this. I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for watching my channel. To see more of my videos or learn more about my online classes and courses, you can click on one of the links appearing on the screen.